Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com and today I'm going to be testing out this new spot welder that I just got in. Now I haven't opened it yet, I haven't seen it before, so uh, I'm going to open it with you guys. We'll check it out, test it, see how it works, and see if it's worth it. Alright, let's get to it. Alright, let's see what we got in here. All right, so this is the spot welder from Secure Mall. I've never used this before, but I saw it in a video and it looked pretty interesting. So I wanted to get one and check it out. So it looks like we've got some spare spot welding probes here. More spares. Wow, they give you three spares. That's nice. Looks like they give you some 18650 holders as well. That's pretty cool. Here's a little bit of nickel strip. I'm not sure if that's going to be pure nickel or coated steel, but we can test that later and find out. All right, here we've got the foot pedal that will activate the spot welder. Here's the main event. Ooh, this is solid. That thing is heavy. So here is the actual spot welder. Oh, yeah. All right, so this is the SQSW1. Uh, this runs on 10 to 14 volts, so I've got a 3S LiPo battery, which is going to work great for it, which is exactly what I have here, a 3S 5000 milliamp hour minimum 60C. So you need a high power LiPo to run these. All right, so we've got our foot pedal input. This is the out for uh, your spot welding probes. Here's the input for your battery. And that's it. It is very simple, but it's nice and solid. I mean, this thing feels heavy. And so here we have all of our cables. Here are the actual welding probes. And here is another option for your welding probes. So uh, there are a few packages that this kit comes in. Uh, this is the handheld, sort of one handle do it method. And then there's also the uh, individual welding probes here. So I think this is the package three that's like, you know, the fanciest of all but you can sort of choose which one of these setups you want to use. I'll uh, test them both out here. All right, so here I've got my LiPo. I like to keep these in these uh, LiPo safes. They're just fireproof bags because it's just safer. These LiPos kind of scare me, so I like to keep them as safe as possible. So this one is the Turnigy 5 amp hour uh, 60C rated 3S battery. So this is the minimum of what you need to run one of these suckers. And so I'll start with the sort of simple handheld probes. Let's get these set up. So I imagine you just slide your tips in there. Let's choke up on those a little more. So hand tightening doesn't actually hold it in there. You need to use a tool to lock that down. All right, so these are gonna go in the out here. Now let's plug in our battery and hope nothing explodes here. All right, so far so good. Nothing is exploding. All right, and then so five. Let's bump that up a little bit. I usually like a little longer. Let's try something like 10 milliseconds. All right, so let's get our foot pedal set up here. And I'm going to use some nickel strip I already have from Vruzen. I know they include some, but to be honest, I don't really know what kind of nickel strip that is. And I just want to stick with something that I know. And let's see what happens if we just try and weld some of this together. All right, so first test. All right, that's quite a good weld there, actually. Look at that. Oh man, that is difficult to pull apart. That is a nice weld. There we go. Ah. All right, so if we come in here and we take a closer look, that's actually a pretty nice weld. I mean, I ripped apart the metal to get that apart. So I'm pretty happy with that, to be honest. Let's try turning it down a bit. Maybe 10 was a little high. Guess I should really start at what they <laughs> they set it at at default. Let's try that again. All right. Let's see if we can pull that apart. Man, that is still quite good. All right. So I'm able to get that apart with my hands, but still, we've actually 
ripped the nickel strip apart there to get it apart. We've actually got a hole in it now. So that is quite a good weld. I am really satisfied with that. Yeah, let's try this with a actual cell now. Here's something interesting, it's set with an auto weld. So if I just hold these here, it'll just do the weld for me. All right, let's see. Those look really nice, folks. Those are some really nice looking welds. I mean, everything is nice and clean. Let's pull those off. All right, so I can work them off by hand, but not easily. And again, we've actually ripped through the nickel strip. So you can see there's nickel strip artifact left on the end of the cell. That's exactly what you want. You want to make sure these two metals are actually bonding like that. And so we've got a really good weld there. I'm really happy with, with how that looks. All right, so here's that auto pulse I was talking about where uh, it'll actually count down and weld for you once it senses the two probes are making contact. So um, here you can set it for anywhere between a half to five seconds, which is nice. Some people might want to turn that off just so you don't get surprised, but that's a cool little feature. All right, so I'm going to bump up well, just a little bit here. Let's go like seven milliseconds. Let's work on the other end of the cell here. All right, let's try that. I'll just let it do the auto welding. All right. Now, again, those are just, I mean, those are really nice looking welds. All right, so again, I can pull those off, but let's see if we can get you in for a little tighter look here. So. I can pull those off, but I got to go real hard and we're ripping the nickel strip apart. So that is great. I mean, this is exactly what you want to see with a nice, clean, strong weld. So, I mean, look at that. We're, I mean, we're just shredding the, the nickel there. That is beautiful. Oh man. I mean, it's not great for my cell here because I don't want to be leaving a ton of nickel. I got to grind off. But uh, in terms of an actual weld, assuming these weren't practices and that I wanted to leave these here, these are great welds. Oh yeah. I mean, you can just feel where the nickel is left on the cell there. That's beautiful. All right, so let's unplug here and change over and test out these other probes. All right, so here it looks like I've got a little blade switch here. And then these uh, probe holders are spring loaded. So when you push down on whatever you're welding here, that would activate that switch. It's not plugged in, by the way. Um, so let's try this out. And on the other end, I'll have to add these other probe holders. So we'll unplug those probes, put our new holders in, unplug the foot pedal, and then these need to be connected here. I never understood why people use Phillips head for these kinds of situations. Just give me a hex head bolt. Is it that hard? I get the nice button head Phillips looks nice, but come on people. So then here I've got to plug this into the foot pedal input on the actual spot welder unit. And then lastly, I'll put these spot welder probes into the holder here. So again, we've got Phillips head and hex, which is pretty annoying. I mean, at least put like a lock washer or something back here so I don't have to get a wrench out. All right. So theoretically, if this thing had power, pushing these in would now trigger the pulse. So let's plug our power back in here. Let's get another sample of nickel. And let's try this out. Try to angle this so the camera can still see it. Did it do anything? No. Did I not go hard enough? Not getting anything. Why is that not triggering? All right, so if I held it long enough for the auto weld, that worked. 
Oh, the weld still seems quite good when I let it do the auto weld trigger. Ah, so auto mode only allows auto welding. You can't also use the switch. So I've got to put this in uh, manual mode. So off. So now it's in manual mode. All right, let's try this again. Let's see what happens. There we go. That time we welded. See now when I touch it, there's no countdown here for the auto weld. So if I push, there we go. Now we're getting welds. So let's get a battery out here. Here, I'll get a fresh battery. Let's cut some more nickel. And I'm gonna go on the negative side so it's easier for me to clean it up later. Let's do some welds. All right, so again, those are looking beautiful. I mean, those are just, those are great looking welds right there. All right, so those are really on there. There we go. Again, I've welded through the strip there, or at least when I rip it off, I'm all the way through the strip, meaning we're leaving nickel strip artifact on the cell, and that is perfect. That's exactly what you want. So this uh, sort of handheld uh, trigger method seems to work just as well as the uh, loose probes. I'm not sure which one I find more comfortable yet. I'm gonna have to do some more long-term testing and see. I think this is a little bit heavy, so I kind of like sort of the, the free-wielding nature of these handheld uh, sort of loose probes, but it's nice having both options. If you wanna grab this spot welder, and you can swing it, I might recommend getting both of these just because you can feel which one's sort of more comfortable. For me, I mean, they both seem to do really good quality welds and I'm not sure yet which one feels more comfortable. They're both nice in the hand and, and they both actually work quite well. So I'm, I'm a bit split on that. All in all, I'll say this spot welder seems to be working great. I mean, it's a nice little package. I really like how small and uh, discreet it is. It doesn't take up a lot of room on my shelf and the production quality seems to be quite nice. I mean, the case is, is very nice. This um, sort of handheld uh, probe method just looks like it's uh, well produced. This appears to be 3D printed, but it is solid. So uh, I don't have any worry there. I mean, this thing is just, yeah, this is really solid. And then the uh, other handheld probes, I mean, these again, just look really nice. Um, the downside is under the collet here. I noticed it is copper. So it's a little bit soft. I'm a little bit afraid to crank down on this too hard, but it seems like I found a, a nice happy ground because I didn't strip it out and the probes are in there nice and tight. So all in all, I'll say um, secure. You guys did a good job with this welder and I'm a big fan of it. I, I hate that I have to say this, but this is not a paid review. So um, these are my actual thoughts. No one paid me to say something nice about this welder. So thanks for watching everybody. I hope you found that review helpful if you're looking for your own spot welder. And last but not least, before I go, it's time to announce the winner of the giveaway from my last video. And the winning commenter is... Patty Graytalk. So congratulations, Patty, to answer your question. Hopefully my ultimate do-it-yourself e-bike guidebook will help you convert your recumbent trike if that's something you're looking for. Uh, but of course you can choose from all of my books either DIY lithium batteries, DIY solar power, the ultimate do-it-yourself e-bike guide, or electric motorcycles. Just let me know which one of those you'd like and where to send it. And anybody else who wants a chance to win one of those books for free, all you have to do is put a comment down below this video. You can say anything you'd like, and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. And for anybody who doesn't want to wait that long to hopefully win a copy of my book for free, you can always find my books on Amazon. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.